Oh, we are old. Praise God, we are old. <laughs> Welcome to Every Christian Church. Glad you're here with us this morning. Go over to worship. We're going to have a good time with good revelation. Uh, and it's God is going to do it. I actually put it the sixth seal. So uh, they're having the number 10 Halloween today. The sixth seal is a real thing. Y'all come on. Don't get afraid. Because if you're saved, you ain't got to worry about it. Six seal I've got this morning to enjoy the worship of God. And you're doing it. Everybody stand up.
guess what? Look, we're all celebrating Halloween, but we're celebrating God. Amen. 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 We're not celebrating that He's just dead. We're celebrating He just died and come back to life. Amen. Risen. It's time to receive our offering. Remember, we don't have ushers because of COVID, so the little grass guy in the back is the guy that put it in the door. When you come in the door, you see the grass guy in the back there dropping it in. If you've already dropped it in, I want you just to hold up your hand. If you haven't dropped it in, hold up your offering. But hold your hand up no matter what. Hold your hand up and I want you to repeat up for me. I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. Although these my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply it. Except my seed. Oh Lord, give them a hand clap.
me all that bad fortune. Please let me sing in the choir. Oh, 
when when I got saved, here's what happened. When I got saved, uh, I've been playing around. I played around. I know none of y'all ever played around church. You know, you come in, just keep your wife happy. Have you ever done that? Just go to church, keep your wife happy, or to keep whoever somebody happy. I was just going to keep my wife happy. And when I got in there, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit got a hold of me. I mean, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me. As, as, as God saved me within weeks, God told me to get up and play the bass. I said, God, I don't know how to play the bass. It was in a revival. God said, I didn't ask you to tell me you knew how. I asked you to show me you were available. And I stood up and played the bass with some help from New Manchester. And a couple weeks later, me and Bert and Ray were out singing and playing. Played church all the time. But the very first song we learned was like that. And every time I hear that song, I can see Bert with his bell string with only six strings. And I can see Ray. And I was thinking about the times when we got in church and I had this old jazz bass from church. And every time you hit it, it made, it made the worst sound in the world because the strings were all bad. And I remember those days were so precious to me. And I thank God. Hey, I promise you, if you feel feeling dark anywhere, or you're feeling like you can't see, if you just look up, that lighthouse is still there. And it's very, very powerful. Sing that again. We're going to sing it again. Everybody stand up. We're going to sing it together.
But what I'm getting ready to tell you sounds like it comes from a Stephen King movie. But it doesn't. It's real. This is as real as it gets. And if not trying to scare you, not trying to upset you, not trying to get you to do anything other than to think. But today, today, you could change your life forever. Amen. First, I want to tell you about a, a, a little girl named uh, Marina. Marina was the daughter of a tire salesman. And she had seen triplets for the first time. So she goes, Oh, Mama. And she cried out, returned home. What do you think I saw today? And Mama said, I can't imagine your watch. She said, A lady had twins and a spare. <laughs> All right. Okay, I was trying to make it a little lighter before I get into the heavy duty stuff. All right, get your Bible out. Or you can just look up here. If you don't have a Bible, you can look up here. Because we're going to go to uh, Revelation chapter 12, the beginning of sorrow. So I got it right up here. Or we can go to your Bible. Everybody stand. Get your Bibles turned to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Or you can just look up here at the board. Either way. Now, now this, up until now, it's been pretty tight. I mean, really tight. But today is, and again, I know how God works things. It's amazing that he does this on Halloween at the time. And I had no idea when we were doing this that the time would be like it is. But now, on Halloween, we're opening up seal number six. And I want you to remember... Halloween, there's a lot of stuff going on today that's fabricated. There's stuff they go about on wise tales. There's there's all kinds of folklore. But this is as real as it gets. Okay? This is real. And if you're not ready, this can really upset you. So I need to tell you ahead of time. This can be very upsetting if you're not if you're not ready, okay? So I just I'll just look over here at this. And behold. When he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sack sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of the heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. In other words, this hurts. Have you ever been, it's one thing to see ripe fruit fall. It's another thing to see unripe fruit fall. It really, really hurts. Uh, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the uh, heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens, in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For a great for his for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to withstand? Let's all pray. Raise your hands forth this way. Father, <laughs> I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, that you have given your word to us. That we can see and know and understand what's coming on, what's coming down. We know, Lord, that there's uh, seven seals and there's seven bowls and there's seven trumpets. And, Lord, this is just the very beginning. This is the sixth seal. And, God, I ask you right now, Lord, to open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds. So that we'll know that we don't have to be in this when it happens. But know that if we don't, if we don't get right with God, we will be here. And God, I just don't want any of my friends, any of my family, anybody I know, I don't want them to have to go through that. In the name of Jesus, we love you. And we praise your name. The church said, Look at somebody telling the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, nothing shall be impossible. Get on a hand clap and praise. Now, we've been going through Revelation now since November. We don't do it all the time because all the time would get really kind of rough on you. So, so I do do it uh, several, several, maybe three weeks out of the month unless there's holidays. And so we finally got to the sixth seal. 
Now, now again, I want you to understand something here. Uh, there's all kinds of explanations. There's all kinds of things that people try to say that's going down. But no matter which way it is, well, some say it's nuclear. Some say that it's actually in, uh, uh, meteorites and stuff coming from the from from the heavens. Either way about it, we're not sure what is going to actually happen, but we do know who's in control of it. Okay. Yes. So I want you to understand this. This I'm going to take my time. I want to show you this. And again, if you don't know somebody, you say, why are you tell us this if we're going to be out of here? We're going to be raptured away. Why, why do we have to know this? Number one, number one is hopefully and believingly and by the word, I, I'm pre-trib, I'm pre-trib rapture. But if you're a mid-trib rapture, and I'm again, nobody, nobody's here to make can, can dispute, okay? So if you're mid-trib rapture, we're going to see this. If you're post-trib rapture, yeah, you're going to see it. If you're pre-trib rapture, I mean, if you really have pre-trib, which I believe it is, we're not going to see this. If you're mid-trib, you're going to see this because this happens in the first 21 months of the first three and a half years. So anybody thinks that the first three and a half years of tribulation is going to be a piece of cake? We've already talked about it. So far, it's not been a piece of cake, but this is the icing on the proverbial terrible cake. All right? So now, remember now, we've been going from heaven to earth, earth to heaven. We've talked about the Antichrist, the four horses, and how Satan has come to, has Satan is using the Antichrist and using all those, uh, the horses. And then we've talked about the things that he's going to be doing. Then we go back up and we see the martyrs up in heaven. And they're praying for God to, to avenge us. And now in the sixth seal, now it really begins. <laughs> Although it's been bad the whole time with famine and war and disease and all of that. All of that. And you can look at today and remember, remember. If nothing more, if this is not the tribulation, this is conditioning. So when the tribulation comes, we ought to be used to it. But there's no way to get used to what I'm getting ready to tell you. No way. You cannot get used to what you're getting ready to hear. You say, why do we need it? We're not going to be here. Well, like I said, you might have some loved ones that need to hear this. And if you don't know, you can't tell them. Amen? It's kind of like I can't tell you how to get to my house if I don't know how to get there. Amen? Okay, so get ready. Now the sixth seal begins to demonstrate God's direct intervention in the world affairs. Y'all say that direct intervention. Direct Up until now, he's kind of backed off. He's kind of he's kind of letting the you know the Antichrist has come and, and he's controlling things and, and you got the four horsemen, you got the you know the white horse and, and you got the black horse and you got the red or red horse, black horse, and then you got the, the pale horse. And so all this stuff already the earth's already devastated. It's already devastated. So now, in the middle of the devastation, this devastation is devastation coming from the Antichrist and from the effects of the Antichrist system. But now God steps in. I mean, God steps in, it's going to be a whole lot different. So now God's stepping in on the sixth seal. And as God steps in on the sixth seal, and he said, well, how can you say it's God? Because now everybody's saying, God, we're hiding from God. We want to hide from God. So they know that this is not something they conjured up. This is not something that another nation has done against them. This is coming from God himself. Okay? So now, so now watch this. All of this is just a part of God's plan. He is pro he's in the process of fixing to right what is wrong with our world. Remember, the tribulation is for number one, for the Jews to come back to Christ. The church was never meant to be in tribulation. We're the bride. We're supposed to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Jews, this is meant to bring them back to Jesus as the true Messiah. Now, also is to reclaim the earth and take it back from the devil. The devil is the god of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air. But all this is leases. And now his lease is drawing to an end. 
And God has taken things back. And God's going to cleanse the earth. And when God cleansed the earth, when he says, so for a thousand year reign, things are going to be a whole lot different. So, so, so here we go. We see here, God's getting ready to, to right some wrong. As a matter of fact, I'd like to tell you this right now. You may be having some things in your life that don't seem to be making sense. Don't worry. God knows how to right that wrong. If you've been done wrong today, God knows how to right it. If you know, if you feel upside down, God knows how to turn you back up. Amen? So, so and I'd much rather be preaching uh, 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 puppy dog tales and rainbows today, but we're in Revelation, and that's what's happening around us. You can see it. If you can't see this, then I want to have two or three of what you're taking. Amen? Because what's happening around us is very apparent. You can see it. You can smell it. You can taste it. Okay, so now watch this. I'm getting ready to, like I said, it's getting ready to be very devastating, okay? So watch this. The sixth seal is with cosmic disturbances. Now, you got stuff coming from outer space. Now, I know we got space shields up there, and I know we got satellites up there, and right now, you know who's getting ready to lead the way in space? Believe it or not, it's going to be China. And when China leads the way, China's putting satellites up right now. Don't think that they're not watching us. And don't think that they can't take us out with those satellites. We have stuff right now, lasers. Believe it or not, we have lasers. But we can actually be in a ship and we can take a laser and take a plane out coming at us. Okay, so that's some heavy duty stuff going on. Can you imagine lasers from up in heaven? So, so we're up in, up, up in the, 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 the first heaven, the, the, the atmospheric heaven. So now... So watch this. <clears throat> now the universe now, when the sixth seal is opened, the universe, not just the United States, not just Ru Russia, has already been defeated. Russia is rebuilding. So Russia has already been defeated. Their allies have already been defeated. The very first, remember, they have a battle in the first of the tribulation. They have a battle in the second part of the tribulation. The first part they are defeated supernaturally uh, when they go against Israel and the last they go against Jesus and Jesus just shows up. <laughs> That's all he's got to do, show up and take them out. So that universe is in turmoil. The, these verses I'm giving to tell you, they, they, they show what happens to a universe that's caught up in some kind of cataclysm. Matter of fact, when it talks about it, it talks about a sackcloth of hair. You know what a sackcloth of hair is? It's actually the black garments that are worn by mourners. So, so here you got these mourners. I mean, the, the earth is going to be in a mourning mode. The earth is going to have. And look, this is the. This is not even halfway through tribulation. Wow, wow. This is as bad as it gets. Believe it or not, this is not as bad as it gets. It's like the guy that, 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 that jumped out of the. I mean, fell off the building. A five-story building, he fell off the five-story building, and people heard him out in the windows. He went by his floor and said, so far, so good. So far, so good. So far, so good, Splat. Okay, this isn't even good. This is bad. All right, so let's go. Here we go. The unconfirmed book says here, the kings of the earth, the princes, that talks about all the different people, the people that are organizing our earth, the ones that are in control, that they're crying in fear. So now, so now watch this. The unconverted, now they're in terror. Men of all ranks are overcome with fear. Kings mean rulers. Great men mean governmental leaders. Rich men are those that control the wealth of this world. Chief captains mean military leaders. Mighty men, those with influence and with power. And then he says bondmen and free men alike are afflicted. Nobody can hide. You can run, but you cannot hide. Right now, I'm telling you, I ran from the Holy Ghost conviction for a long time. Amen. But he finally got a hold of me, and I'm glad I'm glad he did. Amen. But you know what? When the, when the day of grace is over, which is going to be once the tribulation starts, listen, you can run, but you cannot hide. Amen. So now, watch this. When God finally pours out his wrath, men will be reduced to the same level. No matter rich, poor, young, old, it doesn't matter. Now remember, in the beginning of tribulation, the rich are going to get richer, the poor are going to get poor, the middle class is going to be snuffed out. Okay, that's already in the works right now. It's already in the works. Rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and, and there is no middle class. All right? Now, when this starts taking place, now everybody is going to be in the same boat. Matter of fact, uh, uh, fear in the face of wrath is going to be the rule of the day. 
So now, again, I, I, you say, well, this is just revelation. I'm getting ready to pop that bubble if you think this is only revelation talking about this. Matter of fact, I'm going to pop it really hard, okay? Get ready. Look at the great earthquake. The moon, the moon turns to red. All this stuff's happening right now. So watch this. What do they see? They see a universe in total and absolute turmoil. There's an earthquake. Let me tell you about this earthquake. There's three earthquakes in Revelation. This earthquake is going to be the worst earthquake this earth has ever encountered. Ever. Ever. Y'all say ever. ever. This is the worst earthquake this world has ever encountered. But guess what? It's the smallest of the three. Wow. So, the sun becomes black, the moon becomes as blood, the stars fall. Now, now that all naturally stable things are removed. Heavens roll back, and the mountains and the seas are moved. All stability is gone. Now, you know what this describes? This describes nuclear annihilation. Think about it. When the, when the atom bomb went off, and the big cloud came up, and it rolled up, the, the sky rolled up like a curtain, Okay, and you see the, the sun becomes black because the earth has been bombarded. The, the, you can't see the moon or the sun for the smoke. And when you see the moon, it looks as blood. The stars fall. So again, we know God's in control of this. And they're calling God. They're saying God did this. But I'm here to tell you, stars falling from the sky again is like nuclear annihilation. Okay? So I don't know if God's going to use nuclear annihilation. They're also talking about now there's meteorites that are heading toward our earth. And our earth can actually come under attack from meteorites from outer space. The gravitational pull, the gravitation around the earth so far has been able to, most of them, are, are, most of them bounce off or come in the solar system and you got the moon and all these things. God fixed the system where things can bounce off. But you know, honestly, Either it's going to be God using meteorites or he's going to let the nuclear, the nuclear warheads go off. I'm not sure how it's going to be. I just know that God is in control now. God is doing this. Russia's not pushing the button. They don't have one. China's not pushing the button. They don't have one. They've been defeated. So, guess what? Iran don't have one. So let's just look and see again. Ready? You say, well, that's just in Revelation. Well, I got a whole list here of scriptures. But I'm just going to gonna just uh, uh, read a few to you, okay? You don't have to even get out your Bible. Just the earthquake itself, just that great earthquake. Watch this. It says, oh, in fact, uh, Haggai 2 6 and 7 says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once in a little. In a, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And watch this. I will shake all the nations. Now, watching this, here's what we're seeing. We're seeing here, the last clause indicates that not only is there going to be an earthquake of great magnitude, but there's also going to be, when you see nations in the Bible, it's taught, watch, it's a racial, political, social revolution. What are we seeing now? What do we see? We see the racial. We see the political. We see the social. It's all going on. There's so much going on right now, you can't even keep up with it all. Matthew, I'm just going to read this a little bit to you, just a few, few verses to you. Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall, be give her, shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. That's Jesus talking. Isaiah 13. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it, for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth, and the moon shall not uh, cause her light to shine. I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Let's go to Ezekiel 32, 7 and 8. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars therefore dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give forth their light. All the bright lights of heaven will make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord. 
Joel 2, 30, 31. See, this is not just revelation. And I'm only giving you probably, I'm not even giving you half of the scriptures, okay, to talk about this. I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon uh, into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord when it comes. Uh, Joel 3, 5 through 6, 15 and 16. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord shall be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. And, and, and just one more. Isaiah 34 and 4. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down and leave fall from the vine as a falling fig from the fig tree. All the host of heaven dissolved. What's the host of heaven? Think about all the satellites that are going around us right now. They're all going to be destroyed. And they're going to fall to the earth. And they're going to make a lot, lot of problems when they hit. I know y'all ready to shout right now. I know y'all ready to just jump right around and shout. I'm here to tell you something. I shout because I don't plan on being here, number one. And number two, I shout because I still have time to tell other people about it. Amen? Amen. So now, again, here, 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 just, just quickly. Because uh, I told you, this is, this is rough. Now, the next couple weeks is going to be good. But this is going to be rough. Next week's the first, first Sunday, so it's not going to be Revelation. Praise God. Somebody say praise God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. It's back to basic Sunday. Okay. Revelation 6.15. Now, again, the Bible says, While they seek in the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks and of the mountains. See, they run to the caves and dens of the earth to find refuge from the presence of God. All this stuff's falling from heaven. Things are being destroyed. So what do you get under? You get under the rocks. You get under in the mountains and the caves. You're trying to get away from all this destruction that's coming to the earth. And again, this is not the end. This is the beginning of the end. This is the number one, y'all say first earthquake. There's two more to come. So, so again, I know that this is shouting Sunday. Y'all go ahead and shout anytime you want. Somebody say at least amen. Lord. <laughs> All right. If you're not, if you don't plan on being here, say amen. 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 If you're glad you still have a chance to tell somebody, say amen. 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 So that's why they seek. I'm not going to be much longer. And then here is, listen now, this is what they say. And he said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sat upon the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Wrath of the Lamb. I want you to think about it for a minute. Now, now, it's taken all these years, all these centuries, and it's in the tribulation. Now, all men begin to pray. The problem is, it's too late for prayer. Matter of fact, they even pray the wrong prayer and in the wrong direction. They call them the rocks, not the rock, to cover them. They call them the rocks, not the rock, to cover them. The martyrs cried a vengeance in the last chapter, but now the unbelievers on earth cry, hide us. Wow. I can't even imagine. I don't know how bad things are now, but I can't even imagine a force so bad that it's taking out satellites. And the earth is being burned so bad that, 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 and remember, remember also in the first battle of Armageddon, the, the weapons that, that Russia brings against Israel, they're going to burn for seven years. So you got that smoke coming from the seven years of those weapons burning, but now you've got the weapon, now you got the smoke from things being destroyed, and this nuclear annihilation, whether it's through meteorites or whether it's however it's through, you've got that to one to worry about. And uh, so, 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 so let's watch this. Ready? What they say. And then there's a strange statement. I just want to stop right here for a while. The cross. There's love, and there's the wrath. 
of God. Love and the wrath of God. Think about it. Love and the wrath. Jesus took God's wrath because he loved us. And he says, if you take my love, you won't suffer God's wrath. But the world has rejected salvation. And so now they're going to receive the wrath of God. So watch this. And again, I said it's a strange statement. You see, they want to hide. Watch this. They want to hide from the wrath of the Lamb. That's really strange. Because you know what? Think about it. Just think about the strange picture. You know what? There's no more gentle animal on this earth than a lamb. You see it. You can't get much more gentle or docile. And they're saying, hide us from the wrath of the lamb. So you know what they're saying? We knew and we didn't accept the salvation of the lamb. In other words, they say, hide us from God. Here they say, hide us from the wrath of the lamb. So in other words, they know the cross was rejected. And because the cross was rejected, if you accept the cross, he took the wrath. If you don't accept the cross, you take the wrath. And that's what's going on. Different from the wrath. Amen? So there's two words here for wrath. I want you to see this here. There's a combination. Okay? But there's two words for wrath uh, uh, in the Old Testament. And the first word is thumos. We get thermometer. Uh, <coughs> it means a sudden outburst of anger. You know, it's like a shotgun. One blast and it's all over. Right here is a different word. Right here is forging. Orange. Think about forging steel. Forge. Orange. Hot steel. You're forging steel. Think about it. It's an anger that slowly rises like water against the dam. Until the dam breaks and the flood comes. So now, that's the anger. That's God's anger. God is not quick to be angry. God has slow anger. So now, so now watch this. And, and, and we're getting close to the end. I've I got some things here to put up before you can, so you can read it. Of course, the martyrs cry to vengeance. The believers will cry, hide us. Watch this. Deliver us from the wrath of the Lamb. It's too good for me to even try to just wrote it down. God has held his anger for 6,000 years. And the water of his wrath has risen against the dam of mercy. And that dam is at a bursting point. Men are going to face the flood of God's fury because of their sin. And because of their rejection of Christ. Wow. I want y'all to watch this. I want you to read it with me. The day of the Lord's vengeance is fast approaching. It's coming. That's what it's going to look like. It's got to be whatever, whether it's nuclear or whether it's from the atmosphere. That's what it's talking about. The, 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 the unripe figs hitting and the stars falling from the sky. Satellites. Bombs. Wow. So now, watch this. I want you all, if you can, I want you to, I'm going to read it. But if you can read it with me, read it with me when you see it. The day of the Lord is a period of time in which God will deal with the wicked men directly and dramatically in fearful judgment. Today a man may be a blasphemer of God, an atheist, and can denounce God and teach bad doctrine. Seemingly God does nothing about it. But the day designated in the scriptures, the day of the Lord is the day of the Lord is coming when God will punish human sin. And he will deal in wrath and in a judgment with, with a Christ rejecting world. One thing we're sure of, that God in his own way will bring every soul in the judgment. Seal 6 is bad. 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 It's the worst the world is going to ever see up to this point. But after seal 7, and when the coast starts going afterwards, they're going to think seal 6 was a picnic. Wow. No guys come over here and play something. If you've taken hold of God's hand now, You're not going to have to experience the wrath of God then. You see, Satan is conditioning the world. They're so conditioned right now. 
I, I can't even believe. I, I sit back and I watch and I think, how in the world can some of this stuff that people are doing and saying and the way they're trying to push and control everything, how can people be falling for it? That's because they're being conditioned. Remember you talking about, talk about it all the time. You can take a frog and you can throw a frog in a boiling pot and the frog's coming out. But you can put a frog in cold water and then just turn up the heat a little bit. He'll wiggle and get comfortable and go back down. So you turn the heat up a little bit more. He wiggles and gets comfortable and he goes back down. And he'll do that until he boils to death. Right now, the world is like that frog in that pot. We're being conditioned. That's why Satan doesn't want churches open. Have you noticed there's only one group of people you can talk about and nobody gets you? It's Christians. Only group.
God to do. I want to be able to have the power to do what's necessary to help as many as I can escape what's coming. If I'm talking to you right now, yeah, you're okay with God, but you want more. You want to be stronger, but you put that hand up. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Let's all pray together. We've been doing this for Revelation ever since the very beginning. God is good. God is good. 
I love the anointing oil unless I'm trying to get my car and drive. <laughs> Amen. You say, I think the pastor's drunk in the spirit. No, he's got anointing.